Welcome back to Just Chatting, and these are our Thursday evening videos that we do for entertainment. You pick the topic, I do the research, and then we chat about it. But in this case, you didn't pick the topic. I didn't either, really. I came across this topic totally by accident. I was researching for one of the other videos and came across an article in the Sun Online. Now, the Sun is a UK newspaper. It's a tabloid. And tabloids have a poor reputation in the US. Um, they're sort of thought of as, as sensationalist, you know, I saw Elvis in Des Moines and he was pregnant with Bigfoot's baby and, you know, crazy out there, not news. But since tabloid only refers to the size of the paper, half size newspaper, that's all it means. And since The Sun is actually a very popular newspaper in the UK, I'm assuming it's very different there and that this is a perfectly legitimate newspaper. I will say the story I read was well-written, newsworthy, you know, uh, nothing that led me to believe I was going to run into Elvis and his Bigfoot baby, anything like that. This is a perfectly legitimate story. And interestingly enough, nobody else seems to be picking up on it, which is shocking the daylights out of me. So when we come back, we will get into it. The story appeared online on June 11th. That's when it was posted. It was written by someone named Martha Cliff. And the title of the story was Archie Well Off. A uh, play on the words Archie Well and Well Off financially. And Miss Cliff was discussing uh, a campaign on the Archie Well website. For those of you not familiar, this is the website of our friend Nutmeg and her sock puppet Harry that is about uh, compassion in action. That's what they're calling it. And they are soliciting stories from the general public about actioning compassion. It's hard for me to say that. Action is a noun, not a verb. Actioning is not a real word. Good heavens. But we discussed this already with her babbling word salad. So what Ms. Cliff was uh, focusing on was the terms and conditions of these stories. When someone submits one of these compassion in action stories, they have to give up all their rights and then Archwell is free to uh, sell it, use it for profit, and make money on it, basically. And that was Ms. Cliff's focus. So, because I am in the US, and tabloids sort of have a bad name in the US, naturally, I went straight to the Archibald website I, and experienced that I would only recommend if you have trouble sleeping because it is probably the most boring website I have ever seen. Dull, bland, hard to navigate. Mm. But I didn't have any trouble finding their terms and conditions for these compassion stories. And it seems to me that Miss Cliff just scraped the top of the iceberg when she said, Archiewell can take these stories and use them as they see fit for profit. That's only the beginning. So, let's say you submit 
a story to this website. Uh, when you submit it, you have to click on uh, the little button that says, I, I have read and understand. That's how they phrased it. I have read and understand the terms and conditions. Um, so, yeah, it should be, I have read and understood. These are, are not rocket scientists, believe me. But they have pretty sharp lawyers. Because you go into the terms and conditions. You are not only giving Archwell and Archwell Partners, collectively called the Archwell Parties, and they include Netflix, Spotify, and probably anyone else that Archwell does business with emphasis on business, complete rights to your submission, even if they don't post it online. So you send them the story and you've given it to them, even if they don't use it. And here's the thing, it's not just the right to use your story for profit in film, in video, in other publications, for educational purposes, for games. For all I know, you could send in a story and it could be the next Smash video game. They could make serious money on this, especially if they get stories from good writers. But you don't even get writer credit. You cannot even claim authorship of the story. And they will be very, they're very clear about this. You will not get credit. You won't. You submit your story, your name's not on it. Begging the question, of course, whose name is. Because they can, in fact, once you've given them the story, they can claim authorship. So let's suppose that you write a story um, and like a neighbor's house burns down and you help organize a community drive to help out the neighbors. And you think to yourself, all right, well, I'll send in the story. It'll get national, maybe even international attention. And the family will get more money because, you know, they're not back on their feet again. They still have nowhere to live. So you're totally motivated by a good intent, compassion and kindness for this family. You're not looking for self-aggrandizement or money nothing for yourself. You're just being kind. They can take your story and let's say they get 500 submissions. And of those 500 submissions, maybe 5% are good. Good stories, well written. That's still two dozen stories. They can compile it into a book. They can publish it. And if these stories are well written, the book could sell. And look at how well Nutmeg's book sold. And I know eight-year-olds that could have done a better job on that. It's so bad. It's frightening. Book sells. Guess whose name is listed as author? That's right. Not yours. Probably Nutmeg's herself. What if the book is really good? Let's say it comes to the attention of the Pulitzer Committee. You know who's going to be collecting the Pulitzer Prize if it wins? Not you. Not any of those other two dozen contributors because you're not even getting mentioned in the acknowledgments. And you have said so when you signed off on those terms and conditions. Not Meg can walk off with the Pulitzer Prize for someone else's work. And this is, that's the part that's, that's so troubling to me. You have to relinquish your basic right as an author to claim authorship. You can't even say, I wrote that story. They are not even going to give you credit as the person who wrote that story. You send it in, it's theirs. You've just given it to them to do what they please with it. 
exploit it for profit, twist it, put a whole new meaning on it. Um, and they are very specific about this in the terms and conditions. I have reprinted them in the video notes below this video. This is full terms and conditions. I have not altered it in any way except to condense it because I, I have a limited amount of space. Condense it to fit in the space, that's all. So you've surrendered all of your rights. This is like someone buying a painting, scratching off the artist's name, signing their own name, showing it at a gallery and saying, look, I did that painting. That's really what it boils down to. Um, these rights, just fundamental rights, your right to claim authorship, your right not to have your work distorted in a way that's damaging to your reputation, would make you look bad. You have to sign all of that away. Those rights, by the way, were memorialized in uh, the Berne Convention in 1886. So this is not some new um, intellectual property law coming out of the computer age. No, no. This has been a feature of European law for almost 150 years. So it's considered so basic. You are right to retain your right as author that it's called moral rights. It, it's like it transcends the law. It's your just, that's how basic it is. You have to surrender all that. So, oh, and in addition to surrendering all this, you're going to have to execute any documents they want you to execute, uh, which would enable them to sell your work and profit from it. And there's a whole paragraph full of serious threats if you don't. This is so aggressive. It, I'm, and unnecessarily so, unless their goal is to solicit works they can then exploit for profit. Um, I can't see any other reason for demanding all of these rights far in excess of any demands anyone else made. If you sent a story in to a magazine or a newspaper, they would not ask you to surrender your moral rights. They would not demand that you fill out whatever forms they need you to fill out to enable them to sell your story to somebody else for a profit. They would not get the right to to change, alter, distort your story in a way that would make you look bad. But Archuel does. And you have to ask yourself, why would they be demanding these rights if they didn't intend to use them? Because Archibald's supposed to be a charity. If nothing else, the optics on this are bad. But a charity is asking people to, to give up their moral right, to give up something as basic as their right to say, I was the one who wrote this, unless they plan to put someone else's name on it. Why would that even be a consideration? It wouldn't. And it is not, not by a long shot, standard uh, for, submission, for submission of a story to a publication. So that's why I think it was just scratching the tip of the iceberg. The profit element is relatively minor compared to the rest of this. So let's say you send in your story about you know, the neighbor's house burning down and they sell it. And by they, I, I mean not Megan Archwell. They sell your story to their partner, Netflix. Get a lot of money. 
Netflix decides to make a movie of it. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, I never really wanted my name on it anyway. They can still use your name. They can still say, Mary Jane Smith, or whatever your name is, is the lead character in this story. And they can change the story. They have the right, it's spelled out clearly in the terms and conditions. And maybe they think it'll be a little spicier if they throw in some more drama. So instead of being played by Julia Roberts, you're going to be played by Glenn Close, complete with stock pot full of boiled bunny. And their new plot is that you had an affair with the, the husband of the woman who owned the house, and you were the one who snuck in in the middle of the night and burned the house to the ground. And they can use your name, absolutely, and your biographical information. You're giving them permission to do that, too. They can ruin you. Can you imagine what someone could do to another human being with rights like that? How damaging it could be? And keep in mind, if, if I handed this document to a group of intellectual property law attorneys and said, tell me all the ways this could go wrong, they could come up with scenarios that make the one I just played out look like a Sunday afternoon at the beach. And without your moral rights, remember your moral right is your right to object if they distort your work in a way that damages your reputation. Without that right to object, not only can you not do anything about it, but you can be held liable for damages if you do not execute all the documents they need in order to trash your reputation, distort your life story, sell it to someone else for a profit, and not even give you credit as the person who wrote the story. Wow. And you gotta wonder, like I say, who would ask for rights like this? Why would anyone, if they didn't have it in the back of their minds, that they might use them? They might want to take advantage of this. They might want to exploit someone's story for profit. Why else would they put in their terms and conditions? We can exploit your story for profit. You agree to this. Obviously, that's what they are thinking. So, I guess one of the first questions we might ask is, is this legal? Would, would these draconian conditions hold up in a court of law? Well, here in the U.S., I guess the answer is maybe, maybe not. One judge might look at that and say, hey, the terms and conditions were right there. You click that you, that you read them. Um, you know, what? Didn't you understand that it was in black and white? And it's in fairly simple language, too. You might find that judge saying you're stuck. On the other hand, you might find another judge saying, well, there's no equity. Um, there, there can't be a contract. You got no consideration. They simply took your story, gave you absolutely nothing for it. So it's not fair. So I guess the answer to, will this hold up? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Obviously, Nutmeg's lawyers think it will. And I would imagine it would cost a great deal of money to fight it out in court. She has the money and she is litigious. The person submitting the story probably doesn't have anywhere near that kind of money or anywhere near that sort of litigiousness to stick with a lawsuit like that, costing them money in legal fees with the hope of, who knows, maybe not the judgment they want. You've also got to wonder, what is a charity doing issuing terms and conditions like this? Archwell is supposed to be a nonprofit. 
as a nonprofit, Archwell should not be soliciting contributions, whether they be in terms of money or intellectual property that can be converted to money, soliciting that from the general public and then selling it or giving it to their partners and who then can exploit it for profit. That that's completely undercuts the purpose of a charity. Charities are not supposed to enrich Netflix. Charities are not supposed to enrich Nutmeg. They're not supposed to enrich a British prince. They're supposed to enrich poor people. That's, that's why we do it. That's why we give to charity, to help people less fortunate than ourselves. Well, I don't know about you, but I do not consider Netflix to be less well off than I am. So I've got to wonder how they're getting away with this. And I also have to wonder why, as I mentioned initially, why is no one picking up on this? Why is it that with all of the YouTube channels that are talking about what not Megan and Harry are up to, why is nobody looking at this? Because this is despicable. I, I'm sorry for that, but it's the only word I can think of. The people contributing the stories are compassionate people writing stories about their compassionate actions. Furthermore, they are fans of Harry and Meghan. That's why they go to their website. How can, how can these people... How can Harry and Meghan justify exploiting their own fans? It, these are people who obviously like them and go to their website. Believe me, nobody would go to this website unless they were fans of Harry and Meghan or Insomniacs, because this website is as dull as dirt. It's bland. The navigation is bad. It's a, it's got some kind of weird illustration that looks like the hind end of a dog, a hand, and a bunch of bunny ears. You don't know. No idea what's going on there. This is not what I would call a dynamic website. Why would you go there? Why would you submit a story if you weren't uh, attracted by you know, whatever, the aura of royalty, whatever it is those two are bringing to the table? These are the people they are planning, proposing, paving the way to exploit for profit. Wow. And also, I would have to say, I think there's a strong element of scam in this. Because I do not believe for one instant anyone submitting a story to that website has a real understanding of the potential ramifications of this. Do they realize their name will not be attached to the story as author, that they have to give that up? Do they realize the story can be twisted, mutilated, distorted to make them look bad? Do they realize that it can be sold? for the profit of others, I very much doubt any of that's true. Usually people who are compassionate and want to do something to help others assume other people are also compassionate. They look for the best in people, not the worst. Do these people realize that they can be held liable for damages if they do not follow through and help nutmeg take control of their intellectual property by signing off on forms and documents as required? No, no. Personally, I have to say, very few things I have ever come across this outrageous because it's exploiting people who are kind. I don't mind if you want to take advantage of a bank robber. You know, 
But the old adage of you can't cheat an honest man, no, you most certainly can. Honest people are the easiest people to cheat because they never see it coming. And the truth is, those are the people who are going to be cheated by this. Personally, I'm horrified. I don't know what to say. So I thought I would share that one with you because I haven't seen anyone else start to pull this apart. If you have, let me know in the comments. I'm thunderstruck. And I also have to say that even though in previous videos I have said, I think that Nutmeg has personality disorders, but I don't think she's a complete sociopath. I do not think she is out of her cotton pig in mind. I'm starting to reconsider that position after having gone through that website and taken a look at, at the just inexcusable lengths to which she is willing to go to exploit her own fan base for her personal profit. All right. We're going to do a slideshow on the way out. I will see you all over the weekend for thrifting videos. Uh, remember, I have eliminated the Friday video. Um, we are doing this Saturday and Sunday only. And then we will be back with more Just Chatting next Thursday.